Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world? And now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world. If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business. To pick up your copy, go to brettridgeway.com forward slash freebie. Welcome to the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgway, where you'll learn the keys to building a profitable speaking business from speaking industry pros. Each week, we interview a great guest who will share his or her speaking journey, identify what their keys to success have been, and highlight some critical mistakes they've made along the way that you'll want to avoid. Be sure to visit our website at spotlightonspeaking.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, sit back, tune in, and get ready to meet this week's guest. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Spotlight on Speaking Show. I'm your host, Brett Rudway, and I'm excited to have as my guest today, Dr. Tamara White. Dr. White is a trained, certified life coach, licensed professional counselor, and motivational speaker. She specializes in providing women with actionable steps that can take to change the trajectory of their lives. As Tamara says, women are the backbones of our families and communities. We give so much of ourselves to our spouses, children, parents, the community, and work that we often lose sight of our needs, wants, goals, and desires, ultimately leaving us empty after we've filled everyone else. Welcome, Dr. Tamara White, to the Spotlight on Speaking show. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate it. All right. So I got to tell you, this is a special birthday edition of the show because today's my birthday. Oh, well, happy, happy birthday, sir. But the, the best thing is it's always my reminder that my anniversary is in three days. So my wife and I will be celebrating number 40 in three days. So congratulations. This is a special week for you. Do it up big this week. Birthday week. A lot of eating out, I'm sure. So. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So let's dive right into your story, Dr. White. So you okay. have done some speaking. Obviously, all speakers would like to do more. So yes. when did you first get into the whole coaching arena? And when did you decide that you needed to add speaking to your marketing mix to help attract clients for your coaching business? Well, interesting enough, long before it, you know we, we called ourselves speakers, I noticed I was always a one that was volunteered to you know give a round robin of something or to be the one to explain something in the jobs I've had or the ministries that I've been involved in. And I didn't look at it as a speaking; I just looked at looked at it as I'm, I wasn't afraid to get in front of a microphone. Um, and so that's been my my course throughout my uh, working history. But then in coaching, um, which I started about 10 years ago, there were opportunities that were positioned because some of the groups I was in was always looking for, as most people know, they're looking for someone to speak uh, at the meeting. Mm -hmm. And that gave you an elevation to talk about what you do. So, you know, I was always raising my hand, getting in line and uh, putting my name on the list. And and so I've been invited to speak at small, small events uh, that different ones have had, uh, had the opportunity to be on the podcast like you, with, with you and thank you. And I've hosted my own events to um, add my own speaking to the table. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I am now. I have an event coming up. I've done events, uh, done a lot of different things where I have been uh, on the stage and, and speaking um, to the ladies or to the group. Well, putting on your own events is something that so many coaches overlook for, for the, I don't know what the fear is or whatever, but you mm -hmm. know, speaking to your own followers is something that anybody should do. So mm -hmm. in my mind, typically, there, there are three primary types of speakers. One is what I call the keynote presenter, which everybody's familiar with. Yes. Second is what I would call the platform seller, somebody who's going to deliver content and then make a, a pitch or an offer of some type for services at the end of their talk mm -hmm. and the third is just the business builder speaker speaking to local groups to build awareness and hopefully those people will have a need for what yes. they offer at some point in time mm -hmm. so which, which of those arenas do you feel that you most fit into and what what's the reason that you've gone that particular route well so far i've been in arena number three <laughs> where i have been um on you know 
speaking to the small groups and talking about what I do. I've done breakout groups in different um, seminars and whatnot. I've not been the keynote. So I'd like to reverse that and become the keynote. All right, so do you offer your coaching at the end of these business yeah. building talks? Excuse or me. Is it, is it a soft sell and you you know maybe they'll take your card and hopefully they'll follow up or whatever? Well, it's probably more, well, I would say when I am in the front of the room, it's going to be a direct sale. It's going to be a direct, you know, you've listened to me. I'm here to offer my services, you know, that whole pitch. When I'm in the front of the room, I do that, but I've not been invited to be a keynote. And when I do my own events, of course, I'm always pitching my my own. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you're in front of that small group, what tools are you using to most quickly establish some type of rapport with your audience? You me. I think the allergies are kicking up. Now, the tools that I use, one is engagement. One is uh, just developing the rapport, uh, definitely establishing eye contact with those. I do walk around if I have an opportunity. I do a lot of walking around so that I can see people's faces, do a lot of smiling. Um, and then um, there's opportunity for them to you know, have a one-on-one -on -one with me. Uh, if they'd like to set up an appointment, they can do that free discovery call or strategy call, uh, as I call it, and uh, offer uh, some type of free free gift. Um, and then assure them that this is not, I'm not going to push you in the corner and make you do anything. This is going to be a really soft conversation where I can get to know what your needs are and you can get a little bit of uh, opportunity to know how I can assist you in that. So when you are looking at an event that you might speak at, how do you assess the event as to whether it's a proper fit for you? And that's an excellent question, Brett, because I'm learning. I'm learning the hard way that I have said yes to a lot of things that wasn't, uh, you know, it just wasn't uh, my, my cup of tea, more or less. And so now I'm want, asking, you know, who is the audience? You know, is there age, what's the demographics, more or less? Is there a certain age bracket or, or, or what have you? You know, my, my clientele are women. Excuse me, I don't mind speaking to men. And I have speak, spoken to men. But I want to know who's going to be in the room. You know, what type of employment uh, opportunities do are, are they involved in? Just kind of really get an idea if this is for me. And then not to mention, what is their attendance like? You know, because, you know, your local groups, it's a hit and miss. You know, you can walk in the room and have three or four. And you can walk in the room and be pleasantly surprised. And there's 20 people in the room. So I try now to bet a little bit more uh, before I say yes, because I've said yes a lot and been very... Uh, it's like a time robber, disappointed and all of that. You know, I certainly feel, Tamara, that, you know, when you're first starting out speaking, you should probably speak about anywhere you can just to get yes. more experience and comfortable with your talk and all that. Mm -hmm. But I was on a summit recently, and, and the thing that I talked about was the three biggest mistakes I see speakers making. Number one on my list was not doing their homework in advance of an event. Exactly what you're talking about, the demographics, mm -hmm. who's in the audience. What's the size of the crowd, et cetera, because you can yes. waste so much time, as you said, speaking to the wrong group or whatever. And, yes. and, you know, one of the things that I've also found over the years, and I've probably attended a couple hundred events over the last 10 years, 15 mm -hmm. years, and that is event promoters tend to dramatically overestimate the number of people they can bring into a room. And so yes. they tell you that they're going to have 100, you're lucky if you have 15 or 20 there. They tell <laughs> yeah, you they're going to have 500, true. you're lucky if you get to 75 or whatever. So yes. I always caution people, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt and, and the multiplier I would apply to it is about 25% on average or whatever. That's so, right. That's right. You know, particularly if you're, if you're giving out, you know, printing out handouts you're going to use or materials yes. you're going to the audience or whatever and you print a whole crap load of them and if i yes. carry most of them back you know what a waste of time and money that is so doing your homework was number one on my list of biggest mistakes i see speakers make so mm -hmm. i gotta ask you this so are you are you a powerpoint person or not or you just like to get up and have a informal chat with the audience i love the powerpoint because you know for me it just keeps me on 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 my toes um <clears throat> it keeps me from forgetting about anything specific that I had wanted to say. Um, and of course I have spoken without PowerPoint because sometimes you're, you know, at these little restaurants and 
<laughs> back rooms, you don't have a PowerPoint. So I'm always, I always have notes. I don't, I tend not to speak out of my head and I don't try to memorize the whole, whole deal. And so I'm always flexible. If there's no PowerPoint, I ask that. And, um, and then sometimes it doesn't even work. I've been, I've spoken where I did all the PowerPoint and it didn't even work because the technology, something happened or the person that knew how to work it had left or whatever. And uh, by then you got to move on because you're on a time crunch. So I, I've had that experience. I've also had the experience, Brett, where you mentioned where you do all this preparation. And for me, it was an out of town experience. So it made it even more aggravating because I had to travel on the plane with all this. And then the numbers just weren't there that were told to me. And so I had to travel all the way back and there, there was nobody to help me. There was a promise that people would be there to help you to cart all this stuff from your hotel room yeah. down. And um, the hotel room was shy of even having any carts to use. So it that was really a tough one. I like to have a story I tell quite frequently, Tamara, where I, I flew a whole crew out to an event in San Francisco all the way from Indiana because we managed the back room sales table at events. Flew a whole crew out there. 300 people were promised to be in the room. Had big name speakers coming in. There were 13 people in the room. It's like, oh my gosh. Well, good thing I have some type of guarantee in my contract because <laughs> right, is they gonna make it on sales or whatever? So right, exactly, exactly. That's why I was hoping, you know, for a big pitch and and sales, and uh, it didn't happen. So another lesson learned. Yep, there's always lessons along the way. So yes, sir. Since most of your speaking has been to the small local groups, it sounds like. Yes. What has worked? What has worked best for you? in terms of finding those speaking engagements for somebody's looking that for that type of thing? Um, you, you know, the, the local stuff is more like word of mouth, um, definitely word of mouth, or uh, there are a lot of virtual events now where uh, people see you on social media. So it's, it's about me being on social media, having posts out there, um, just like I was referred to you. You know, it's about opening up your mouth and letting people know what you do and then someone says, oh, so-and-so, so-and-so. And so that's pretty much what happened with me uh, meeting you. And then some of the other podcasts, I just they have um, opportunities out there where you can go and ask for um, to be on someone's podcast. You know, they have these different sites. So you put your information in there. Um, so I'm always asking. You know, I'm always looking and asking and, you know, trying to explore what the next steps are going to be for me to get to bigger stages. So... Next question, Tamara, is give me your, let's say, your your three biggest tips for making sure that that speech that you're getting ready to give is the most successful that it can be. Um, I would say one is, like I said before, is really doing some vetting before uh, you say yes uh, to it, before you go through all that preparation. Um, and just having some speeches on hand that you can just uh, rinse and repeat more or less, maybe refresh, because, you know, if you, for me, I'll be speaking out of the same mouth, you know, the same subject matter, but that's one of refresh if I need to. And then making sure that um, there's contract in place, you know, people say they're going to do things and, and uh, sometimes it doesn't happen. So, you know, what would be my takeaways if I'm getting paid? I, you know, there's certain things that... Uh, that I want, you know, am I going to have a microphone? I mean, I've, I've been in situations where even that wasn't there. <laughs> you know, what kind of is, uh, you know, is the audio visual uh, stuff in the room, um, the connections and, you know, just how much will I need to bring with me? Um, so I always want to do all the vetting, all the homework, having, um, because at, at a dime, at, you know, spin on a dime, you get a call and someone wants you to do something. Having a speech already prepared, having a couple of them just kind of, then you find out what the audience is like, and you can choose which one of the three of the speeches that you have already created that you can use without having to start all over again. And then knowing what your crowd is, if if you get a, if I get a call for certain things that aren't me, then for me, with my integrity, I would turn it down because if you know I would be speaking to the wrong group of people, they're not going to feel my vibe, and I'm not going to feel theirs. Yeah, that, the one thing that I 
you alluded to is what I call the back pocket speech. You always got to have something you can pull out on a moment's notice. You, you know, somebody gets sick at an event and they need a fill in speaker or whatever. Well, you're the one that needs to be able to seize that opportunity and step yes. up in front of the audience and deliver your message. So, yes, yes. Well, kudos to you for being prepared for that. So, I've got a couple other questions I want to ask you, Tamara, but before we do, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. All right. Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world and now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world? If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business. To pick up your copy, go to brettridgeway.com forward slash freebie. And we are back with the Spot on and Speaking Show. My guest, Dr. Tamara White. So, Tamara, how do you make sure that your speech is what I would call modular in nature so that you can adjust it on the fly based on the length of time you have to talk at a particular event? Well, I think, you know, uh, typically you prepare a, an hour speech or a 50-minute speech, and then I think that you can just... Um, pull out what you need for a 30 minute speech. You know, you can pull out the highlights. Maybe you've got three bullets under each one and just kind of pull out the highlights. So that's what I try to do. Most of the things I do, although most of the speeches I've been asked to do, you've you got about 30 minutes. So I'm, you know, keynotes usually get the hour. I've always just done 30 minute speeches. So uh, I have had to um, drill down on, the, on mine because I'm running out of time and places. So I just kind of know what I'm talking about and just eliminate maybe one or two things that might be generic or might sum up, uh, maybe do a summarizing versus, you know, spreading out each bullet point and it's going into an expansion on that bullet point. And that's, that's pretty much how I've been able to do it. So are your speeches primarily a direct sales speech or there is there a content followed by the quote pitch for the coaching services? More, more, more content, you know, a lot of content about what I'm talking about. And then in the end or throughout the speech, you know, dropping little uh, drips of, you know, this is you, then I can help, you know, that type of thing. And then in the end, give that direct uh, offer uh, to work with me. And that's how I've been taught to do it. So what do you think the proper mix percentage wise of content versus pitch should be in a talk? I, I'm not sure about percentages. I just think along the, during the talk, you need to mention that you're the one that they need, that you're the source of help. Um, and not that it's, it's more of a soft, like, you know, something's going on and, you know, you know, have you ever considered hiring a coach? Have you ever considered hiring someone where well, you're talking to that person right now, things that are softer. And so, because you want to catch them, somebody gets up and goes to the restroom or, they got to go answer a phone call. You want to keep dropping the drip on them because everybody is not paying attention throughout the whole thing. So right. <laughs> attention span. All right. So now it's the bury your soul portion of the program. And that's tell me some embarrassing thing that happened during your speaking career that left you a little bit red faced at the minute, but a valuable lesson was learned. And it would be something that you would highly advise up and coming speakers not to do. Oh my goodness, I, I'm trying to think about that. I don't think I've had anything yet. Uh, you know, other than, uh, my paper, I'm a witness from another speaker. All the papers, you know, if I'm not doing a PowerPoint, then all the papers uh, fall on the floor. And now you, you've lost your train of thought. You, you know, you you can't follow through. All the papers are on the floor, and then someone comes to help you and. They give them back to you. Now you don't know where you know where you really are. You're trying to find that one, one sheet out of ten. Uh, that did happen. That did happen. And so we just laughed through it. And I just I just went on and talked uh, the rest of the time. I thought, well, forget it. You know, there's no way for me to find where I was. You just gotta get back on the train, right? Yes, yes, that's right. Get back on the train. Get back on the train. Just tell you All to right. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to. Yeah. Well, you know, I. When you have that moment as a speaker and you, you know, you feel like it's two minutes or five minutes long and it's actually about five seconds long, you know, they don't notice, but you're beating yourself up like crazy because you think they're, you know, they're staring at a yes 
blank screen or whatever for so long. So yes, yes. All right. So I want to give you a couple of minutes now, Doctor White, to tell people a little bit more what it is you do and how they okay. can get involved in your world if they so choose. All right. Well, I empower women leaders who are overwhelmed and stressed and burnt out to regain their their calm, to regain their clarity, um, to re regain their work life harmony. Uh, so that they can incorporate better relationships and um, live their life on purpose. Um, because we are living in a very anxiety, stress-born world. Um, as a certified life coach and licensed professional counselor, I'm dealing with a lot of people with a lot of anxiety and stress and things like that. So I just help women to learn how to calm down. I have an, uh, my, I've created a courageous woman effect. So helping women to live more courageously so they can learn how to fight through those things and manage them when they pop up in their world. So how would you tell a speaker who's battling that anxiety before a speech to handle it? Um, one is they need to know what they're there for. You know, you're there to deliver, you're there to, to serve. And so it's not about you, you know, get out of yourself. And I don't say it that hard, you know, but, you know, think about what you're there to do and, and breathe through it. And, you know, try to get people to calm down before they go and just think about what the gift is that you're trying to give. And um, that usually works. It works for me, you know, give, have an analogy to think about uh, the greater good that I'm there to do versus worrying about my anxiety and my my stressors in terms of speaking. And, uh, you know, you have to just feel the fear and do it anyway. All right, fantastic. So, Tamara, I want to thank you so much for being my guest on this episode of the Spotlight on Speaking Show. Yes. Check out in the show notes down below more information about Tamara and links to her social media and her websites. And, I, Tamara, I wish you the greatest of success in all that you do and to all the listeners out there. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Thank you. And as always, I wish you to have this year as your best year yet. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. This has been the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgway. Be sure to join us every week as we interview speaking industry pros and have them share their best tips for building a profitable speaking business. Until next week, thank you for tuning in and remember to visit our website at spotlightonspeaking.com so you can enjoy even more great episodes like this one. While you're here, be sure to subscribe via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Spotlight on Speaking Show. Until then, our sincere best wishes to you for the greatest of success as you work to build your own profitable speaking business.